don't understand why you keep lying. That is a snitch and I will die. This is not a joke. You will die. We're talking about life sentences here. Right. And this is like really something. Just like <laughs> <don't laughs> in the That is a lie. Ty's kid on three of Yo, God, yo. <laughs> Okay, 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 what's the vibes, YouTube? It's your boy Swaggy G coming at y'all with another reaction vid. Whether y'all just got to work, boss been tripping, asking you to do way too much that don't match your pay rate, or you just got out of school and your teacher been nagging you and your classmates coming in 8 in the morning eating hot Cheetos, screaming at the top of their lungs, yo, chill, 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 bro. I'm already knowing, but I already found the fire vids of the day. All I need you to do is smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. Join the fam. It don't cost nothing to join the fam. Don't be petty. Smash that subscribe button, join the fam, and let's tap right into the video today. When the bodies of three teenagers were discovered over a period of several days in the same neighborhood in Marion County, Florida, the police didn't know what to think. This would set the tone for the rest of the case, as the emerging suspects all seemed intent on blaming each other. Damn, off rip. Damn, man. They showing black hands case, and dreads. Emerging... Like, look, you could tell everybody here black. This is niggas. This is some nigga shit. Black Suspects hands. All seemed next slide. Each other. Dreads. Nappy the dreads like that. Bad dreads. Like, freeform dreads. Like, bro, we got to stop, man. As a people, we got to stop and. I mean, they can't even really do nothing. They, if they did that shit, they did that shit. The alleged perpetrator, along with the motive for the heartless murder. The lips, too? To be... They showed the ashy lips? Nah, bro. I'm starting to think whoever made this video type racist. Tent on blaming each other. They showed a the identity skin of the color, alleged perpetrator, the dreads, along with the motive. and some ashy ass lips. Oh, the heartless God. murders. Nah, out this, to be this more seems alarming kind of funny. than anyone wanted to believe. The I ain't gonna keep pausing. The first learned on. that something was terribly wrong just before midnight on March 30th, 2023, when they received this 911 call. There's a girl laying in front of my road and she's dying. Okay, is she awake? She's dying. I don't know. She's bleeding out of her head. She's gargling on her blood. You need to turn her on her side so she doesn't choke, okay? On, mm. It doesn't matter what side, like on what side. No, just turn her on her side so she doesn't choke on the blood, okay? Oh, God. Is she awake? No. Okay. Is she breathing? She's, bre she's breathing. Oh. Do, you know, do you know how far they are? I, I don't have an ETA, but they are on the way, okay? Deputies from the Marion County Sheriff's Department arrived moments before the ambulance. While paramedics rushed to try to save the victim, the deputies tried to get a grasp on the chaotic scene. Within five minutes of the ambulance arriving, the victim was on her way to the nearest hospital. The sheriff's department was left to pick apart the seemingly inexplicable scene. Is that responsive? No, not responsive. No, there's no ID, no nothing. Young girl, old and younger girl. The shoes right there, and that's been moved. She was right there, right? Yeah. And there's there's blood everywhere. I was not expecting that. No. Well, I thought it was going to be BS, honestly. Yeah, I immediately thought she had got, like, hit by a car. I mean, that's not I, BS, I've seen though. the big, but I've never seen an exit wound in a head. Yeah. So Did I wasn't aware. Oh, yeah. I, just, I mean, there's, she's laying down. It's all they shot pulled her in out. The head? I mean, it was. And she was still breathing? Rapid breathing. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know. Medic said she ain't got Yeah, more than likely. I mean, if, if she did, that's, that's wild. When police made contact with the 911 caller, the they learned the that head. he was just as confused about the situation as the deputies. He only became aware that something was amiss when he got a call from his neighbor across the street. Uh, you didn't hear nothing she at all? She told me it sounded like someone crashed into my dumpster and then there was like two shots. The neighbor in question made her way over to talk to the deputies directly. Unfortunately, what she said only served to make the situation even more mysterious. So... Around what time did you hear? You said it sounded like a gun, like a... Yeah, it wasn't a loud gunshot. I would say about 20, 30 minutes ago. Um, it wasn't a loud gunshot, but I heard about four or five. And I kind of blew it off casually. And then I just looked out of my window because I did think it was strange with it, how late it was. And I saw the car run into the dumpster. Mm -hmm. And I once I seen the car run into the dumpster, I stepped out my door. And I seen a man run out of the car towards down the road towards my yard. And I yelled at him, what the 
are you doing? And then I seen him run back towards the car, take a minute, and I was calling him because it was his dumpster, and I seen him skirt off into the neighborhood. You know, did terrible. you see if anybody was in, it was only one? Was there I only people? seen one person running, and it, it was a male. It had a male figure, mm -hmm. had a hat on. Um, I want to say he was like five foot, maybe, but it was only one dude running down the okay. road. This once again tracked with the evidence as police found several sets of footprints at the scene. Did you hear the crash first or did you hear what sounded like I gunshots? I heard the gunshots first. Where did you the deputies closed down the main entrances and exits to the Forest Lakes Park neighborhood, hoping to catch the alleged shooter as he attempted to flee. Unfortunately, the area was heavily wooded with plenty of places to hide and lots of back roads. This made for a difficult search for police and an easy getaway for the alleged perpetrator. Meanwhile, the hospital where the victim was being treated was able to provide some help in that regard. They identified the girl as 16-year-old Layla Silvernail. 16. Her grandparents, who were her legal guardians, were understandably distraught. Detectives first made contact with her grandfather, Kenneth. Layla was found, um, she was apparently with a, a gunshot wound. And she was taken to the hospital. So that's part of the reason why we came here was to let you know about her status. But we also wanted to know any information that you had about who she was with yesterday, who she hanged What's out she with. What's in the hospital for? She had she a gunshot shot. wound. Huh? She was shot. You're kidding. No, that's what I told you when this I This is what I've been trying to tell her. You're hanging around with a crew. Kenneth hurried to the back of the house to get his wife, Lisa. Shot! Shot! What? <laughs> Yo, I'm sorry. It's not funny. It's not funny at all, but the way they're saying it, it yo, bro, like they're deaf and they're trying to communicate. So it, not deaf, but it's they're hard to hear and they're you, you can hear. Shot, shot, shot. What? Yo. Layla's grandmother only seemed to become more distressed when the detectives tried to ask her questions. Lisa, Lisa, come here. Lisa. Have a seat right and here. Is my granddaughter okay? Will she be okay? She's going to be at the hospital. I don't know anything. That's why I said to you. I'm a symptom advocate, okay? I'm here for you. Have a seat for us. We need some information so we can find out who did this, okay? I like to know, too. We, we I need... will go and I will shoot that ass and it's so low. Lisa, listen now. Where was she shot at? Does anybody know anything? She was shot in the head. Yeah, right okay? hey, once you hear that headshot, it's like you already know it's very unlikely they're gonna make it. The situation was actually more horrifying than Lisa knew. Early on March 31st, the morning after the shooting, the police stumbled upon the last thing they were expecting. Just blocks away from the crime scene where Layla was found, police discovered a second victim also suffering from a gunshot wound. There was little doubt that the two cases were connected, which made the search for the shooter all the more urgent. Back with Layla's grandparents, the detectives desperately tried to find out who might have been with Layla that night. Since they'd already found two victims, they had to wonder if more of her friends were hurt or in danger too. Lisa, look at me. Who was she with yesterday? She came here with... <laughs> She came here with them, and I'm going to tell you everything, because okay. I don't like the people she hangs around with anyway. Okay, that's what we need. That's what we need. <laughs> Lisa said Layla was almost always with her boyfriend, 17-year-old Michael Hodo. She also directed the police to Layla's best friend, who might have more information about her activities the day before the shooting. Another name came up, too, and it was one police were already familiar with. And then that runaway girl, Camille... Okay. She was with her too yesterday. Camille Quarrel, 16, had been reported as a runaway by her aunt and legal guardian several weeks prior. It was an open secret that she'd been staying with Layla at her grandparents' house, but no one had successfully brought her home yet. When police made contact with Camille's aunt, Amy, she was not shy about expressing her frustration with the investigation. I did call it in this morning to ask somebody to go through there. And nobody has called me back. I've called five or six times a day since she's been gone. Even worse, Amy's son was hearing all kinds of gossip about the case at school. People were saying Camille had also been shot. 
The names of the victims and the location of the crime was seemingly common knowledge. Disturbingly, police had not yet confirmed if Camille was involved. Also, they'd not yet released the names of the victims or the location, which meant whoever was spreading this information had to be involved. And there was another body discovered this morning uh -huh. in that neighborhood. Okay. I want to know if it's my child. Okay, the second person is not uh, Camille. I can't identify who that person is, but it's not her. The identity of the second victim only made the case more dire, especially in regards to Camille's safety. Frustratingly, the police were still in the dark about most of the lead-up to the crime, up until they got in touch with Layla's best friend, Gabby. She was more forthcoming and told the detectives that she'd spent the day with Layla and her boyfriend, Michael Hodo, and several other teens who would soon become an integral part of the case. Was there anybody else in the car other than you, Layla, any time during the day? Camille was there. This was the second statement placing Camille at the scene of the crime, but disturbingly, there was still no sign of her. Prior to the shooting, Camille's aunt said she'd caught sight of her at the park once or twice, and kept a close eye on her Instagram feed to see what she was up to. Since the night of the 30th, though, it had been radio silence. Back with the detectives, Layla's friend recounted their travels throughout the day, and who else was with the group? We went to Rob's. We went to, like, you know, like, I don't know if it's abandoned. Do you know what a trap house is? Yeah. Okay, so apparently, <laughs> like, appar apparently, like, this kid Rob, I don't know him personally, but they do. Okay. Um, they're like friends or whatever, and we just went over there and we chilled over there. Significantly, Gabby said that Layla had been the one driving all day, but the only sign of her vehicle, a white Chevy Cruze, was a tire track left at the crime scene. The police hoped that finding the vehicle would offer some insight into what happened the night Layla was shot. Do you know it, it last name or anything else about Rob? No. I don't really know if Rob is like his real name or mm -hmm. not, because I know some people know him as Reaper, Rob, and stuff like that. Reaper. So was anyone else there at, at the oh, house besides the three of you and Rob? Well, there was this kid, 3-5, but I don't know his real name. 3-5. What's 3-5 look like? Um, I don't know. He He's 12. He's, he's a little he's kid. He's a 12-year-old? <laughs> Detectives knew they needed to track down Rob three, and 3-5. Three, five. They started with Rob, who they believed to be 17-year-old Robert Robinson, who was already incarcerated at a juvenile detention facility for a different offense. When detectives asked him about 3-5, he directed them to a boy named Christopher Atkins. Shockingly, Gabby was right. He was only 12 years old. Since Chris and Rob were both minors, their mothers were asked to join them at the police station before any conversations took place. Chris's mother, Ashley, was the first to arrive. I don't understand. Where the hell is my son? If he be in question, why the fuck I'm not in there? <clears throat> Where, what's the thing? Where, where's my son? He's in the other room right here. You talking to him? Not yet, no. They're, they're, they're all getting their stuff oh, together. Stuff right. It seems she wasn't convinced they weren't already questioning him because Ashley did her best to hear what was going on in the other room. After almost two hours of waiting, she was finally escorted to the next room to join Chris, who was visibly trembling. Hey, can I put this on? Sure. Yes, yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Did you have another jacket? That's okay. Hey, Are you sure you look like a cold? Let me get you. Let me get you say you have four siblings? Okay. You guys get along okay in the house? The detectives set about gradually breaking the ice with Chris, all the time appearing hyper-aware that he was only 12 years old. After taking all necessary precautions, like making both Chris and his mother aware of their rights, and establishing on record that Chris knew the difference between right and wrong, they finally got to the issue at hand. So Chris, what I'd like to start with talking to you about is, um, and like I said, I just, wanted, I just want you to be honest with us, I'd like you to talk to me about last Thursday night. First, we made him eat. Then we watched TV. And I went to sleep for a little bit. And I heard something outside. I opened the open door. There was nothing outside now. I think I went to sleep. So I think what you just told me 
was what you probably had rehearsed in your mind several times to tell a police officer if you ever had to talk about that Thursday night. Because sitting here and talking to you, with your mom here crying, and, and knowing that you have these siblings, I, you're probably in sort of an embarrassing and, and shameful position. If you are sorry for what happened, repent for it and start from the very beginning and go to the very end without me having to pull it from you. Because somebody that I have to pull each individual action from, that tells me that they, they don't really want to say what they did wrong, that they don't feel bad for it. Reaper down there is, has been super honest. Um, he... Uh, you know, yeah, and that's get, that little game they playing, man. With me. Like your and, man's already um, snitched. You better, you better get up on it. Everything down to details that only he would know, and that's involved. That son of nobody some, else would know. Some of the details, um, he points finger at you. Seventeen-year-old Rob, also known by the concerning moniker Reaper, was also being questioned. Just like Chris, Rob and his mom, Erica, were both advised of their Miranda rights before the interrogation commenced. I'm trying to bring the best way to say this to you guys. Um, we're investigating several different incidents that occurred over the last couple of weeks. Okay. Um, one being uh, a theft of side-by-side. Okay. Uh, -side. One being the theft of, um, I'm sorry, a burglary. Um, we're investigating a, a robbery, and we're investigating murder. Okay? Um, alright. Yo, that dumb face is going to piss me off, especially if he has something to do with it. That face right there. Okay. Come on, bro. Um, Come right. on, bro. Mm -hmm. So... The first ones you named mm -hmm. is believable. The last one you named well, is not. You don't have the heart to keep it going. I know that for a fact. Okay. What'd you do on Thursday all day? I mean, I was home all day. Like, I was home all Thursday. Okay. Who were you with? Was it, Did anybody come over? Did we hang out with anybody? At did like you go anywhere with anybody? I ain't go no. Came over at like 1 o'clock. What'd you guys do then? We were just chilling. Literally, like, we were just chilling. Okay. Was anybody with someone at the time? How did he get to your house? Things like he that. He drove. Supposed to drove to my house. It was him, um, Landon, so, so. Layla, mm -hmm. and it was another girl with them. I don't know her name. Sosa was a nickname that Layla's boyfriend, 17-year-old mm. Michael, used. Michael's father had last seen him about 6:30 last night, around the same time Gabby said she parted ways with the group. Michael Landon was crazy. another local boy who police determined didn't know anything that would aid the investigation. As for the unnamed girl, the police likely wondered if she could be the missing Camille and why she hadn't been seen or heard from since. Did you go anywhere after 6.30, Rob? Well, why do y'all keep asking okay. that? I just want to ask it because we've been working on what, our investigation for What do y'all think happened, bro? I'm telling you, I you understand in the that, house you understand that round. night. Like, I, would, I only seen Sosa one time that day. Rob, we know you were out of the house after 6.30. Okay? <laughs> Your boy try to break we out the shit. Around 7 o'clock p.m. Thanks to CCTV footage, Police believed that Rob, along with others in the friend group, had been involved in the theft of a vehicle and oh, an damn. armed robbery that night. As serious as these crimes were, they paled in comparison to what police believed happened later. Back in the room with Chris, his mother tried to make him understand the severity of the situation. Well, you need to tell you know, if, if, if you ain't doing house the time, this, now's the, the, now's, the whole story. Now's you the know time. you got out of the house Thursday when I told you not to. We're and you finna that, speak. You, know, you gotta talk right now. And we're, Reaper's already told us what the plan was that night. Mm -hmm. So there's, I mean, we knew what we know what the original plan was. We're asking you now to be to be honest and to, to come forth and tell us what happened and why it happened. And you not on window. When you say he, I don't. I never want to guess. Who is he? Uh, Reaper, a.k.a. Rob, took a lot of convincing before he opened up. Rob, right now you're protecting KTM and your buddies. You need to think about protecting I'm yourself. protecting... The disturbing meaning behind KTM will be revealed in due time. For now, game? the fact that the police knew about the mysterious phrase was enough to get Rob talking, albeit reluctantly. Was that the else? When you saw... When you were with... Who... 
Who was we, with y'all? It was me, T5, mm -hmm. Layla was there, mm -hmm. and that was it. You don't even know he's saying now a lot. There were more people at the house than just Chris, Rob, Michael, and Layla. Did you go anywhere with them that night? No, I ain't go nowhere with them. I just told you, I went, I swear to God, was at the house. Damn, they bro, said was gonna swear to God. I went back home. Actually, Mom, I didn't come in until, like, late. I didn't come in until after 7 anyways. I don't, I don't know what time you came home. Now, but they talking about what that move like at 17. I was, what I was I'm, in What I'm bucket. saying is, you don't know what time you came home because you defy your curfew so much much you don't know what time you came in it might have been eight o'clock it might have mm -hmm. been 7 30 it might have you know what i'm saying so you don't know what i'm saying is if you know something that they're trying to get out of you i don't give a f who your friends are who you trying to protect i gotta get to work and i'm sick of dealing with this jail could you choose to have Unfortunately mm. for Rob, the police already knew that he was still holding back the dark details of what he got up to that night. What about a cell phone? Do you, they, do you they, own that phone? Yeah, I own that phone. So okay. do, do you all want permission to check the location? That would that be phone? great. Yeah. No. That would what be do you great. Mean, no. Yo. Check my phone. They're, they're, they're not looking. They're yeah. not looking in your phone for anything. His else. mom is. So you're certain yeah. that your phone GPS will keep you His at mom your house giving that, it up. that night? Yeah, he's cooked. he's cooked. He's cooked. He's cooked. Are you? He's cooked. He's cooked. He's so cooked. we go. So we go. I just, no, I can just tell you, I really don't know nothing about no murder. That that is the truth. I don't know nothing about no murder, and I was not. Paul, I was not there with no murder. That's no, not. That's no not murder, what they no asked killing. though. That's not what they asked. What they asked was, when they pull this GPS, will it show that you were at home in your bed or will it show that you were somewhere else? That's the question that was asked. I don't know. You don't know? I don't know what y'all want me to do. Like, I'm telling you stuff. I, they want you to tell them I'm lying and I'm telling them the truth. And you're sitting there glory with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, why oh, yeah. His yeah. mom is putting them on the platter. She's putting him on the plate. First and foremost, you lie so much, I don't know what to believe what comes out your mouth. You didn't bump the bridge that's been gone. Let's get that understood. But what I'm saying is, you so quick to want to protect people? Let me finish. You so quick to want to protect people? Don't want to snitch? Want to be cool this and cool that and not be known as a is in the paperwork and all of this that you're willing to sit here and go down for f murder that I know you didn't do. I know for a fact that you didn't do it. But you're going to be guilty by association because you don't want to tell who the f did it. That's the problem. I did not kill nobody. I did not kill nobody. Did somebody you know do? do it. I ain't gonna lie. He's getting interrogated by his mom. The cops ain't even no saying murder. too much. I don't know nothing about no murder. And if you lying, you standing on this island by yourself. Because if you got something to tell these people, because they have a way to tell if you're lying. The best way to tell if Rob was lying was Chris, who was still in the room next door. He was sharing a bit more than Rob, and some key differences in their statements stood out already. What do you think he's going to tell us, Robert? He's not going to, with me, I just swear to God, he's not going to, I didn't do anything. I promise you I didn't do anything. Who did? I don't understand why you keep lying. And then you go back. You know, it's going to be a snitch. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If it's a snitch and I will die. This is not a joke. You oh, will die. Yeah. Like, you will die for snitching out here. People die for that. Real talk. Why would people get bought and killed for snitching? Well, we're talking about life sentences here. Right. And this is like really sweet. Just listen. <laughs> 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 Took a life, you get life. What the 
the fuck? What you thought this was? You thought you was gonna get a couple months? Well, on top of that, you almost eighteen, bro. You going get? You probably gonna get tried as an adult. Real talk. Twelve-year-old. That's a different situation. Right, and this is like really Just listen, your actions. And the people you choose to hang with and bring all of this <laughs> is slowly killing me. I should just pause. Let me talk. Let me talk. I'm supposed to be at work right now. I just took a promotion. I can't keep missing work. All the that you are doing or the people you hang with or just any of that. Like, I'm, I don't know if you know or not, but they threatening me with contempt of court because I don't come to none of your court e uh, stuff for the other shit you got going on. Mm -hmm. I make sure you get there, but I cannot keep missing work. And you sitting here in my face telling me that you don't want to snitch because your wife, is, they going to kill you and pause. You, 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 Some part of this tirade must have made an impression, because at long last, Rob shared his version of events. Ty's kid all three of them. Yo, God, yo, <laughs> what? Yo, he gave it up so crazy. Pause. He said Taj killed all three of them. Fuck, fuck it, man. I ain't, I ain't doing this shit. <laughs> Taj shared his version of events. Ty's kid all three of them. Fuck it. Okay. Tell me about it. Were you there? With the, the whole story? Were you there? The Boy, said, Mama, please. Tell me the whole story. Rob just mentioned three victims, but the detectives had so far only asked him about two. Not only did this grab their attention, but they likely suspected that the Taj that Rob mentioned was 16-year-old Taj Bruton, with whom they were already acquainted yeah, he, due to previous cases. He case. just looked like a dirty nigga that do that shit. I ain't gonna lie to you. He, let me move back down here. He just looked like a dirty nigga that do that shit. True say. Unfortunately, this didn't mean they knew where to find him. Several weeks earlier, Taj <laughs> cut off his ankle monitor and went on the run. The detectives would focus on this after they got more of the story from Chris, who picked up the story after he said Rob, a.k.a. Reaper, knocked on his window. Okay, Reaper knocks on the window. He knocks on the window. He said, come on, we're going to go see some girls or something. Then we, we went out. And this girl and this boy picked us up on the, the wood. This girl and this boy described. From Rob's statement, the police believe this had to be Michael and Layla. He made no mention of Camille, however even when he explained where everyone was sitting in Layla's car. The seating arrangement would be crucial later. Layla was driving, Michael was in the passenger seat, while Chris and Rob were in the back seat. But they weren't alone. Then somebody came in the car, I don't know his name. It was, some, it was like a, somebody in all black. Okay, and how does this person look? I know you said he's wearing dark colored clothes, right? I know yeah, you, I heard you say yeah, that. Ski mask on too. Yeah. I'm telling you what, if somebody got in the car wearing a ski mask, I'd be like, what is going on? But that We're didn't appear to be blood. Chris's response, and the detectives likely had a horrible and inkling I don't know. as to why. Yeah, yeah, I was there wrong. I was like, I thought we were going to see some crazy. like, we had. I was like, oh, all right. And then we kept driving again. Throughout his interrogation, Chris would only refer to the man in the ski mask as the X-Man. Luckily, Rob had already revealed the identity of their companion. We'd pick up Taj. As soon as Taj came out of the first thing, he told me, like, we knocking on I'm, we knocking on I was like, nah, bro, I ain't even trying to do all that. It took a little more persuading, but Rob eventually told the police that they could find Taj at his girlfriend's house. They picked him up and brought him to the station after they finished talking to Chris and Rob. But instead of clearing up the questions detectives had, Taj made everything more confusing. He said everything was Rob's idea. I'm sitting right next to him. And my, like, he whispered in my ears, like, but I'm finna rob these tonight, bro. And I look at him like, what you mean you finna rob these tonight? He's like, 
bro. That's so sad. They look bad. They got a pound of weed. They got me some money, bro. And if they don't go for it, I'm going to kill them. That's exactly how you say it. At this point, I'm, I'm frantic if but I can't, like, if I tell Sosa, right, and they're all sitting right next to me, so therefore he's going to shoot me. So I'm sitting here, I'm scared as hell, so I'm like, I ain't got no choice but to just sit here and just, it is what it is. Rob told detectives that it was the other way around. It was so random, like, he just said he wanted to knock them off. I'm not thinking he's serious, though. Like, all right, all right, at the time, when he first said it, if you would have seen his face, like, but right, he was laughing, like, hey, if I would have really thought he was finna kill me, like, I wouldn't have got back in that car. I would have stayed right there and called my mom and be like, can you come get me? I didn't think he was serious until when the car starts slowing down and I seen him up the gun. Rob said that Taj did this because he wanted to take Michael's firearm. Over in Chris's interrogation room, his story aligned with Rob's. For now. What triggered him to just start shooting? I'm trying to get right. Is there is something in between that you're not saying? Because yeah. I think the, the person, the person that the white guy, I think they say he had a lot of money or something. Oh, so we was set up as a robbery. Okay, now we're getting mm. somewhere. Okay, okay, okay. So they were setting up the robber man. Did Reaper mention that to you? That no. something was going to be set up or anything? He he didn't even know. Like, all I heard was piled in. Like, I thought somebody was shooting at us, so I hopped out of the car. Ran. I'm looking. Boom! Boom! Once again, Taj's version was a little different. Three five shot so so boom. A Layla got shot by uh Rob because that was that. Oh was yeah. Crazy. Just like that, it took two shots. It wasn't no more than that. It took two shots to kill both of them. The police knew at least part of this was true. Who shot who was yet to be determined. But tragically, they confirmed the second victim as Layla's boyfriend, Michael Hodo. He was in the grass by the side of the road, just blocks away from Layla. He was deceased when police found him. Michael's father had a heartbreaking reaction when he found out that his son would not be coming home. My son's dead, isn't he? I'm sorry to be the one that tells no! you. No! Oh, no! No! Oh, my God! Can they come back out here and help? We have to talk. We have to find this out. Who's to find this? This is to go find out who did this. I'll find him when I go and kill What state is this, man? It's looking like the country. While Michael's family reeled from the devastating news, Chris continued with his upsetting story about Michael's final moments. And you said you said he shot this white guy first? Yeah, he, the white guy was like sitting like this. And like, Where'd he shoot him at? Like, right here. Right and right. the gun was pressed up against his head? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're... I think it was like... Okay. And then what about the white girl that's driving? Tell he me about turned, that. He turned the gun and shot her. Where'd he shoot her at? And... I, don't, I don't know. Rob agreed, which would soon become increasingly rare. Where did he shoot Layla? I think it was head shots. On the other hand, Taj put the blame back on his two companions. I know he shot um, Sosa in the back of the head. I seen that happen. I, I seen Rob try to shoot her, right? And when he tried to shoot her, he shot her, and then her his gun didn't go off, so he reloaded it again and shot her. All contradictions temporarily aside, Chris added another disturbing detail. Did he see it coming? No, it was like on to the back of his head. Okay. Did have any time to defend himself? No, but Ty just upped him and shot him in the head. At this point, bro, police were still searching sick, Forest Lakes bro. Park for evidence. Now that they knew the shooting had occurred in Layla's car, it was more important than ever to find the vehicle. Most of all, though, they were looking for any sign of Camille. They hoped to find her alive, but the police Bro, were likely aware people. that, like Layla, she could be seriously injured and in need of medical attention. If that was the case, every passing moment decreased her chance of survival. Who's there? For the time being, though, her family was left in an exhausting state of limbo. The situation was made infinitely worse by rumors that Camille had been caught up in the shooting. Frustratingly, the police still had no concrete answers for her family. They had to hope that Chris, Rob, and Taj would ultimately provide an explanation. They got even closer when Chris continued with more of the story, but once again, the details started to get shaky. Was the car driving whenever they got shot? 
you know, it was just like, it was, it stopped and then like it kept going. Like when I hopped out the car, it kept going with it. Where did the car keep going when it kept going? Like to a dumpster. Did you get back in the car? Yeah, I got back. I mean, did you want to get back in the car or did you not? No, you didn't want to. Okay, what made you get back in that car? Explain to me that. Because he had a gun and I thought he was going to get a shoot at me. Because if I was just with him and he just, if I was just with him, he just killed somebody. And he probably would kill me too because he think I was going to say. On the contrary, Rob said that he was the one who jumped out of the car. When he right. shot Layla, I got out the car because the blood started dripping and I didn't want it to get on me. Taj claimed the same thing. I get out of the car. They still shoot yeah. because it was like four to six shots. I don't know exactly how many shots it was, but it was a couple shots, bro. So at this point, we hear this lady. This lady is over there like, I'm, I'm running. I'm trying to hide in the forest. I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do. I'm trying to call spring everything. So this lady, she, hey, what's going on over there? He sees me. or I guess he ran back over there. I ran over him. He was like, hey, what, what, this down the third. So I'm like, I'm just do what you tell me to do. I just want to go home. So. The only thing that this established was that at least one of the boys had gotten out of the car. But this wasn't news, as the woman who saw the car hit the dumpster also told police that she saw a male figure running around shortly after she heard gunshots and saw the crash. The detectives decided not to challenge the boys on this front for now, and pushed for the truth on more important matters instead. They started with Rob. What happened to Layla? Where did they... I don't know. Taj threw Layla out the car and hopped in the driver's seat and started driving. Rob said Taj repeated the process a short time later. And Taj pulled Madi out the car, patted him down, the cannon. He grabbed the cannon, got back in the driver's seat, and he drove off. Was that next to Layla where she was pulled out? No, it was in a different spot. This made sense to police because the second crime scene, where Michael's body was found, didn't have much blood. There were, however, what appeared to be drag marks leading from the road towards the brush where the body lay. Did you help take... I ain't touch nobody. I ain't touch a body. I ain't touch nothing. I swear to God, I ain't touch nothing. Once they was dead, I said, take me home, bro. Take me so home. Said, Yet Taj said that wasn't how it happened. Rob drives. He pulled Layla out. Layla out of the car. That's why she got left by the dumpster. Yo, all driving. of them is he's snitching, driving, driving. too. That's the crazy the part. He, yeah, he goes over to the Sosa. The Sosa. He, Sosa had a thing in his somewhere on him. So he pulled Sosa out of the car. He just dragged him over in some woods. Or some and were you driving the car? Um, No, I was not driving the car. Yeah. The detectives asked Chris similar questions. I, Did you pull her out of the car? What is Rob doing during all this? He was saying that. Is he, what's he saying? Nah, he was like, he was like... He was like, oh, he was like, oh, he, and he was like, go, go, go. And what happened next? Yeah. And we, then he, he drove all the way to, drove all the way to, out, out there in Ontawaha. And he, he tried to put a uh, thing on the river, but it, I think got stuck or something. The thing, what thing are you the talking car. about? The car, okay. Once again, the detectives already had information that would let them know if one of the boys was lying. The search of Forest Lakes Park had finally paid off, leading police to another grisly and tragic discovery. Taj picked up the story again to tell his version of what they did with Layla's car. When we get over here to this lake, it's dark as hell. Three five get out of the car. He got out of the car, and Rob tells him, hey, start wiping everything down. So he started wiping everything down. He's wiping everything down. The door handles everything. He's wiping everything down. So... After he started wiping everything down, Rob take uh I think Rob takes Layla phone. This is the person that's hold on. This is the person that thinks they gangster. This is the person that thinks killing is cool. And he is trying to snitch and pin this on somebody else. Or well, two people. He's trying to pin it on two people. This is crazy. Take, uh I think Rob takes Layla Bro, phone. Bro, none of y'all like that. Just chill. Phone, whoever phones he found in that bit, throw him in the lake, watch them, throw him in the lake. The lake in question turned out to be five and a half miles or 8.8 .8 kilometers outside Forest Lakes Park, but police had no question that this was the scene they were looking for. When they dredged the lake, they recovered the two phones from the water, which were determined to be Michael and Layla's. But this wasn't the only evidence they found. Taj attempted to explain what was found as he continued his story, starring Rob as the mastermind of the crime. He tell 3-5, get in the car, drive the car into the lake. For whatever reason, 
When the detectives asked Chris, though, he said he was nowhere near the car at that point. Were you in the car when it was going in the river? Or? Yeah, I, I was out. Of, I was. I was. I was trying to run back to my. Mm -hmm. You were out of the car. What was Rob doing? I don't know. I left. I was running back to to my house. What did he say he did with the the car after that? Then he. I didn't ask all of that. I didn't ask that. What, what about the guns that were used? I don't know where those at either. Oh, it's barely in the lake. Okay. Like when he drive, it might be the look, two front tires in the lake. It might, it might be a little bit more in the hood, but the back of the car, all that is still out of the lake. That was exactly how the police discovered the car. What they found inside was more gruesome than they had ever anticipated. Back with Chris, he continued his tale. Describe to me the clothes that you were wearing that night when all these bad things happened. What happened to him? He, he. He, he wanted us to burn him. Who wanted you to burn him? Uh, Did you have blood or something on him? No. Are you sure? I don't think so. Like, like Detective Bender said, we processed that car front to back, top to bottom, bottom to top, three times. Three days worth of Sorry. actual forensic work. Several forensic people. I don't think you could have sat anywhere in that car and not I got blood on you. I think it was some of my shoes. I'm standing over here scared as f Like, I think it's blood all over me, but it's dark, so I don't know. But I think it's blood all over me. Rob said burning the clothes was all Taj. Taj, of course, said it was Rob. Regardless of who had the idea, the police found the remains of clothing in a burn pile in the forest, including pieces of shoes, sweatpants, and sweatshirts. However, this was not the only clothing item the police discovered intact. Chris's shoes, which he described as Nike slides, were found discarded in the bushes, and a single glove was found near Michael's body. Another was found near the lake. The police asked Taj about this. So were you wearing gloves at this time? Like, yes, I was wearing gloves, because okay. like I said, I was supposed to go pee. And what about Rob? Uh, Rob was wearing gloves, too. Yeah, Rob was wearing gloves, Taj revealed that the original plan was for the group to go car hopping that night, which was why he was wearing gloves and a ski mask. But police had to wonder if there was a far darker reason the boys brought these items. Maybe. For now, the detectives wrapped up the conversation with Rob. Do you feel a little better now that you were honest? Did you, did you need to worse. get that off your chest? I feel worse. Now I feel like I just snitched on everybody and... The detective stepped out, but little did Rob know that his night at the police station was far from over. There was a lot more that he needed to fess up to, but for now, he was left alone with his mother. I'm going to charge you because you were there and you didn't come forward. Did you come forward? I'm talking about when it happened. I just talked about everything. I'm just letting you know, Rob. You don't understand. I'm going to get charged for murder. Mama, what was the point of snitching on everybody? If I was going to get charged, why did you make me snitch? I said I don't Bro. know. You thought, hold on, he thought he was going scot-free for a murder because he told on his men? Bro, you might get a deal. You might not get life. It might be half your life or a little more than half, but you ain't going to die in there. But yeah, nigga, they not letting you go just because you gave it up. Everybody, if I was gonna get charged for murder, Mama, what was I don't know. I'm snitching on everybody. If I was gonna get charged, why did you make me snitch? I said I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Stay out the streets, man. I, I'm not like that, We're man. Gonna ask you to. Nobody like now. that for real life. Nobody wanna do life. Hey, Mama. Wait, wait, chill can, for you can, can, hurt. Is my mama still here? Yeah, she's still Wait, here. mama. Talk to me. Give me okay, she's can, talking with someone. Can you see if, if they do charge me, can you see if she can give me a lawyer? I didn't kill anybody. Hey, relax, relax. Can relax. you ask relax. her, please? Rob waited, asking the detective stationed at the door several times to bring his mother back. But she had left to go back to work. Damn. Before she did, she informed police that she did not want Rob answering any more questions without a lawyer present. Okay. Rob was not on board with this plan. Damn. Is my mama still up there? Hold on. How can I get charged for murder? Listen. Can you explain it to me? Hold on. We got it. We're taking your DNA, okay? While the police took Rob's DNA, fingerprints, and photos, he continued to ask them how it was possible that he would be charged with murder. Listen, can I tell you the situation, please? I heard you, it. Yes, I, listen. Let them do Your mama's not here yet. We can't talk she's to you. Like, she's close. I don't know how far she got, but she is on her way. 
Rob's interrogation might have been on pause, but the conversation with Chris remained in full swing. The questions he faced were about to get a whole lot harder. They executed a search warrant on the house, which they did collect some things, and I'd like to talk to you about those things too. Mm -hmm. But because you, um, because it, it was, a, it was like a surprise on that. Yeah, I'm like, what was in my house? They got to do with this homicide. And... I will, I will, and I'm, I'm gonna tell you about that, because like I said, I'm not gonna leave anything out. It's, uh, I can tell you it's pretty damning. I guess I would use that word. So, Are you serious? Do you own any firearms, ma'am? Does anyone in your home own a firearm? Okay, because I'm pretty sure they found one or two firearms in the house. Um, and I'm sure you guys have watched CSI, mm -hmm. right? We can take a firearm, we can shoot it. That round that you shoot, we can take. And we can put it into a computer and tell you well, who got can actually compare it to other fired casings, like the, sh the shell from the bullet. Damn, um, don't tell me son bought a dirty gun, or he might just be like that. So, um, how... You told me who the gun's from. Oh, How much God. you pull the hands from when you know something that dumb just happened? That was stupid. When Reaper gave you these, you think that they're going to be related to this? I think so. Describe to me why you think that. Because he, well, he said, he said, put these up, put these up, make sure you don't want to find them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and the gun that you saw X-Man use, was it either one of those two guns? I think it was the black one. Yo, know, he's an Rob idiot, bro. He's a. F I know he's twelve, but he's an idiot, bro. Eventually, the detectives did come back to speak with him, since he was insistent on saying more, even though his mother did not return to the station. That's legal. Uh, so. You know, I, I explained to you what your mom said on the phone, right? She didn't want, she didn't want us to ask you any more questions about a lawyer present. And you, you reapproached me a couple times, and you said that you, you wanted to discuss some stuff further, right? We, I, I just want to make sure that we're clear that you don't, you don't have to answer. Is this you legal? Don't have to talk to us at this point, but you stated to me that it's yes, my case. Yes. I want to talk to you. Yes. Because Rob's mom was no longer present, they read him his Miranda rights again. Right off the bat, he admitted to additional involvement. Ties told me to help him pull the body out of the trunk and throw it in the lake. Mm -hmm. He grabs it. He's trying to pull a leg. And he was like, bro, it's heavy. I need help. So I grabbed one leg. I tried to help. I was like, bro, it's too heavy. I don't want to do this. You're cooked. Put the thing down. Left the girl in the trunk. Because I told him I didn't want to I didn't want to help him. Like Rob went on to tell You're a cooked. long rambling tale about selling his gun the day before the crimes took place. The detectives hear him out before dropping a bombshell. So that's an issue because we have that gun now. No, that's not. It was at three five's house. You said you sold it. I did. That's not my gun. That one's not mine. That's that's, that's not the same my gun. gun. In addition to this, the police strongly suspected Rob had stolen the firearm. You so might tell the truth that you didn't pull a trigger, but you knew this was gonna happen. You knew it was gonna happen. I didn't know. I did not know this. The detectives had a similar exchange with Taj. We've sent some of the casings off to be examined already yeah. uh, it's, it's not back i'll tell you that mm -hmm. otherwise we would probably be having this conversation yes. that those casings aren't going to come back like he said to a third gun to a third gun they shouldn't multiple casings were found at all three crime scenes but especially near the car at the lake even if the boys weren't budging on the issue of who shot who lab tests would reveal the truth in due time in the meantime, the detectives brought up something two of the boys in particular were probably dreading. Let's talk about the trunk. Trunk of that car. You coming at the trunk, sir? There's another part that we haven't talked about. Trunk? Mm-hmm. It, it was a girl in the trunk. Mm-hmm. And, and he told me to open the trunk. And he shot it. So, yo, he where had a the, girl. He, whoa, he, whoa, 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 whoa. They put a girl in the trunk, drove her to the lake, and then shot her after killing two other people? 
Nah, I ain't gonna lie, bro. They're cooked. They're done. Throw away the key. Where you open the trunk from? Hey, what? What kind of time they own? Trying to find the inside, like the inside. Okay. And whenever you pull that open, tell me what you saw in there. All I seen was lug tits, and then he said, "Move," and then he shot. Okay. You said all you saw was luggage. Luggage and like a, it was like a girl. Same. And what part of her body could you see? Did you, could you see her feet, or ha her hair, her hand? Describe me I what- seen, I seen hair. I did not even know it was another, body, another person in the trunk at all. Okay. So you just riding around and she's just in there? Yeah. I mean, we rode around like that before, though. Just because there ain't no room for all the people? Just because there ain't no room for all the okay. people. When you go to open up that seat, what were you thinking in your head? Like, what am I going to do? I don't know what to do. I was, I was confused. I was like, yo, yo, like, I was thinking like there's a person back there. Did this person say something? I don't know. Describe to me what you heard, what you heard whenever you opened that seat up. What noises? All I heard was somebody tell me to watch out and I heard gunshot. Two gunshots. Tragically, the third victim was determined to be none other than Camille. Her body was discovered two days after Layla was found on April 1st. Damn. Like Chris said, she'd been shot twice. The location of her wounds indicated that her death had been no accident. It was highly unlikely that Camille had been shot once in the back and once in the head by chance. As soon as she was identified, law enforcement made contact with her aunt, Amy, for a difficult conversation. So you probably know why we're here, um, where we've been investigating the incident that happened Friday involving Layla and the other individual that was found deceased. You know, it took us a little while because we, we couldn't positively identify her, so it took us a little while, but you know, we're, now we're certain that it's, it's Camille that is now deceased. Probably to detective surprise, Amy remained stoic. As it turned out, she already knew Camille was deceased. The grandpa of Layla actually came to my house when I found your card, okay. telling me that Camille was deceased and how was how are you doing is what he told me. They that were talking about Camille it at the hospital that was Camille deceased. was deceased already. I had a mother call me at midnight last night that oh, oh yeah, my phone has not stopped. While Amy tried to come to terms with the loss of her niece, the detectives at the police station asked Chris more about the specifics of Camille's murder. What happened? Mm -hmm. at, what happened after after he shot her? Mm -hmm. He he closed it, and we left. I don't, How many times did he shoot her? Yeah, that's what we're gonna. I think once, twice. Well, what is it? One, one twice. 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 Okay. Do you know where, what part of her body he shot her? No, I, I, when I opened it, he go empty, so I, I looked away. As if this wasn't horrific enough, Taj put forth an even more disturbing version of events. Predictably, he insisted he was not the shooter. The culprit he named was spine chilling. Who folds the seat down? Three five, because he was on the on the side, so he he hops out of the car, right? He get out of the car, flip the seat down, boom, hit her once. So he where, shot. Where did, her he, where did he shoot her? Oh, I don't know. I wasn't. I, I couldn't see exactly where he shot her at, at all. And then she's not dead yet. So Rob sees that and he shoots her to make sure she's dead. So Layla got one head shot and then Camille got two because she wasn't dead yet. For once, Rob agreed with Taj, at least partially. Before his mom left the police station, he told this to the police. It was 3-5 to get that. 3-5 dropped the seat and shot the girl, and he shot it in the head. And, and Taj was like, shoot the in the back, shoot the in the back. 3-5 dropped the back seat and he shot the girl. She was still alive. He's like, finish her, finish her. So he shot it again. 3-5, police knew, was Chris's street name. Still, something wasn't quite right. After getting this far, the police were not willing to accept anything short of the full truth. Now, um, uh, Reaper, Rob, um, there's, there's a lot of similarities that are overlapping here, but there's, there's definitely a discrepancy that Rob told us about what happened to the person in the trunk. They're trying true. to make him the shooter, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what y'all leaving out. I mean, be honest. Be honest. We, we being all, all being honest here, just be honest. Is he the shooter? That's what they're saying? That's all you gotta, all you gotta do. That's all you gotta do is just say that. I mean, stop so, going around it. We, I, can, we I can tell you that, that, that he is not... You, Chris, are not being blamed for, for those people in the front seat. In the back seat is what the trunk is the one that we you... have. We have some issues with the trunk. I'm, I'm keeping it real back. Tell, tell us. 
Be honest, baby. It's okay. Because that's <laughs> you're gonna feel so much better. You're gonna feel so much better. <laughs> yeah, you did that so much better once you talk about what what he did. He's Tell me. Say it. Say it. Say it. You gonna kill everybody I know. I think I think that's so. Good. Tell us what you're doing. I think that's Cap. He's Cap. He's a, he's a, he's Look at him. He's Cap. He's Cap. He wanted to be yeah. down. Who made you do it? He Cap. Who is it? Rob. Rob made you do it? Yeah. He said he gonna kick everybody you know. Well, who is yeah. the X Man? I don't Let's... know who that is. Now, now, did you? Just calm down. My life is ruined. Yet again, Rob said something different. Before his mom left the station, he had shared this information. Todd made him kill the person, or he was gonna kill three five. Mm -hmm. Is that what he said? He told him. He told three five, if you don't kill this girl, I'm gonna shoot you in your head. Well, let's go on here. Maybe he they did he force him. Kill, he would kill everybody you know, and he did fire a gun. Tell me about what you did. Uh, I think I, I shot the girl. And I don't know where it was, but and then he he came up and shot her too. Okay. Who did? Rock. Okay. So when you shot her, what See, gun did you use? Made shot sense. Her? Uh, the ace, the ace do give me the, the sky. If Chris used Taj's firearm, that would explain why they only found two weapons during the search warrant. This brought up another question, though, which the detectives had addressed with Rob and his mom. So that that's my, that's my concern here, is that you said that Taj was pretty much orchestrated this and was concerned that that 3-5 would snitch on him. So, so he made, made him 3 do that. Do that. But, you saying that he was completely fine with you not yes, taking any part of that? Yes, with me, he just told me, if you snitch cut, I'm gonna kill you. With his mom there, Rob insisted that he was innocent. Now that she was gone though, the police hoped he might be more forthcoming. I honestly don't think you're a cold-blooded killer. I know Taj, I've dealt with him, and I've dealt with you. And there's a reason I wanted to talk to you, because I don't think you're that dude. I don't think you're a cold-blooded killer. Taj, I don't know anything about 3-5, I've never met him. But I'm telling you that when the evidence says that you were there and that you shot someone, there is no explaining that. Evidence is going to tell you that I'm there, but I'm telling, I'm, all I can tell you is that I didn't shoot nobody. Did you shoot Layla? No. Because I, I got information that somebody that was in their car had, had a thing for Layla and he couldn't do it. So somebody else did it. No. Okay. No, that's not true. Your brother's talking. Is there any reason why he would be telling people that you shot one of those people if you didn't do it? Police likely used this as a tactic to get Rob to talk and hopefully reveal the truth. Perhaps this was how Amy knew Camille was deceased before the detectives contacted her. In Chris's interrogation room, his mother struggled to come to terms with what he'd done. You shot somebody that's now, dead? Boy, what the no, this is a homicide. This is three people. Man, this is some shit that's serious. You <laughs> will kill my family. What are I supposed to do? That's 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 why. I we're, understand. We're, 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 yeah, so that's what we were trying Chris, to tell you from the beginning. Now, Chris, take, it, now, Chris, take a deep Baby, breath. Just calm take down. a deep breath. Now, listen to me. When you say that someone threatens your family and threatens you, I need to put it in the report. Take, take a deep breath. What am I supposed to do? I, please tell me what am I supposed to do. Chris's mom didn't have an answer to that. She asked one of the detectives if she could step out for a moment to compose herself. No, he know I live, and he know he know my whole family. He was gonna kill my whole. Are you talking about Reaper? Or are you yeah. talking? Are you talking about Stavo? Reaper. He was gonna kill my. Let's let's talk about X Men real quick. This, I I think you know who X is, and I think you're scared of him, rightfully so. They both said he was gonna kill my family. Okay. They both said that? That was both. Did they ever point a gun at you or anything like that? Yeah. Who, uh, who pointed a gun at you? The X Man. Mm -hmm. And she's like, don't tell nobody. Don't tell nobody. I'm, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill, kill your mom. Rob also told the detectives that he and Chris were in serious danger at the time of the crime. So let me tell you something about Todd. Todd's tell you he's going to do something and you decide not to do it with him. They, they, I probably would have died with them. So were you afraid of Taj that night? Because Bro, if I did not do what Taj wanted me to do, I would have died that night with them. Taj is that bad a dude? Bro, you Taj, on the other hand. So hold on, you had a gun too. Why aren't you up it on him? Take the blame. If anything, if 
one of us go down to anything and talk, it was your, it was you. You did it. Everything. You did it. Legit. You, like, you shot everybody in the car. It was not, it, me, if he got caught up, then I was, then he was going to go find my mama. The whole night I did not have a gun. Rob continued with his story, claiming that he only participated out of fear. Did Taj tell you to put the gun to somebody? Man, Taj told me he killed, he told me he gonna kill Sosa. He wanted me to shoot Layla, and then he wanted three five to shoot the girl in the back. I told him I didn't want to do it. He told me if I didn't do it, he was gonna kill me. You hold the gun to her Layla's head? That's good. Yeah, but it, I tried to shoot it, but it clicked. It, like, I tried to shoot, but it clicked. Like, I didn't have it cocked back. I tried to shoot it, and it clicked twice, so then Stavo just did it himself. That's why. Bro, well, your story is switching up so crazy. Listen, listen, listen. Listen, listen. 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 No, y'all yeah, truth. Y'all still ain't okay. gonna lie. Like, what am I supposed to do, bro? Okay. So how long, how long before he actually pointed the gun, he told you to shoot Layla? Uh, we was already in the car. Like, he put it in his notes, showed me, and then deleted the note. What, when was that in the night? Hmm? How, how early, how much before? No, that was, that was like, right before it happened. Did you shoot that girl in the trunk? In Trump? Yeah. Yo, nah, he's done. He's done. Like I said, I wasn't there. Two five shot that girl in Trump. Still, the police suspected something was being left out. Was she still moving after I he think, shot I her? He said he, she was still breathing or something. Mm -hmm. Who said that, X Man or Rob? Uh, did you shoot the girl once or did you shoot her twice? I mean. It, it, doesn't matter at this point. I shot her. I shot her once, and he shot. Sh he shot her again. Chris was talking about Rob. Thankfully, the police were finally getting somewhere with him too. You shot her once. How many times you shoot her? Once. You shot her once. Where'd you shoot her? I don't know. Yeah, you do. There ain't no question. There ain't no question where she was shot. There's. You talk about one end to the other. Which? Where'd you shoot her? Just shot, bro. I seen her and I shot. Like why? Because she was still alive. She was going to snitch on us all. Yeah, she was all going to go to jail for life. I didn't want to do none of it. If I didn't kill that girl, Stavo was going to kill me. I swear to God. I'm looking at her in her eyes. She's dead. Finally, the truth came out. Ballistics reports comparing shell cases found at the scene to the firearms found in Chris's house indicated a match. Whether or not there was a third shooter remained to be seen. I do. I am. I did not want it to happen. I never wanted that to happen. Like, I never wanted to kill anybody. I never wanted to shoot anybody. I never want any of that. I just wanted to get a little bit of money. The detectives made one That's last how you effort see with the Taj. Bit of cash, People man. already ended up there because of you guys' craziness. No, not my craziness. It's not my craziness. Were, were you going to rob them and they... And it was like, either you had to do what you had to do, or a finger slipped and it scared everybody in the car, and then they, it's it's too late at that point. Yeah, I feel you, but that's that, said, yeah, that I makes feel more you. sense than the story that they're telling that you planned to kill these people, that you that from the beginning of the night. I didn't shoot no gun. We talked to Rob and we talked to Chris for hours. For whatever reason, one of them was more afraid of bringing you into the middle of this than they were Rob. So for for that story that. Rob's this this guy that's you know threatening everybody and or his people threatening people or your people. I, I just don't see that. But Taj remained stalwart, insisting that he had never used a firearm that night. The detectives hope that unpacking one final secret could be the key to determining the truth about his involvement. They turned back to Rob to accomplish this. Like Chris and his mom, Rob was also given a jacket to keep warm in the cold police station but he used it in a less typical way. Even as he tried to get comfortable in the interrogation room, one of the detectives returned to unpack a final secret to try to pull the case together. The KTM, what, what exactly, what, what is it that you guys do? What is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a gang? No. It's the first time we did something for it. So who, how many guys, how many people, like, consider themselves a part of KTM. She loves me. Stop her. Five. Rob's yeah, list went game. on, oh. but he only had nicknames for most of the KTM members, not their real names. Notably, Michael, Layla, and Camille were not included. Tom was the leader of 
Chris was somehow even less willing to give up the details of KTM. What's the, the deal with the, like, the KTM thing? Huh? Uh, I know Reaper has the tattoo. What does it mean? Mm. They get that boy McDonald's. You... Cuts. Cutthroat? Thanks. Cutthroat mentality? Does it sound right? What, what, what exactly is that? Like just a, like a made up gang name or? Thanks for that. One of Michael's close friends eventually came forward, provided the police would keep his identity anonymous and confirmed that KTM was indeed a gang. His description of their activities was chilling. Their mentality is a mentality that they will do anything to you and not give a fuck. Mm -hmm. Just to get the money? Yes, just to okay. get the money. Just to get what they want, basically. With that, the detectives had all the information they needed to move forward with the case. It had taken eight hours each to get the truth from Rob and Chris. The detectives stepped out, leaving Ashley and Chris alone for a few moments. Listen, baby, listen. It's over. It's, it's not over. Yes, it is. It's not over. It's not over. You just better pray and hope that you're the, the gun that you shot her with was a murder weapon. Ashley also had some devastating news to deliver that was sure to upset him further. I'm going to go to jail. It's going to leave him. I'll talk. That's because I got to work. So I'm going to go. My grandma will be trying to figure out something. I'm going to try to get out of this. When I get out of here, I'm going to try to get you home. Ashley had a warrant out for her arrest, oh, and in order to be with her too? son while he was interrogated, turned herself in to police. She was charged with possession of cocaine and methamphetamine and taken to county jail. Chris, Rob, Man. and Taj were all taken to juvenile detention, and on May 15, 2023, a grand jury indicted all three boys. Preparations began to take the case to trial, where they will be tried as adults. The 12-year-old too? and Rob are both facing three counts of murder in the first degree because, tragically, Layla did not survive her injuries. She passed away just days after Camille's body was discovered. Taj also has been charged with robbery with a firearm, tampering with evidence, tampering with an electronic monitoring device, carjacking while armed, aggravated assault with a deadly oh, weapon, and grand theft auto. He's cooked. Rob had a similarly long list of charges in addition to three counts of murder, including armed burglary, grand theft of a firearm, petty theft, robbery with a firearm, and tampering with evidence. Chris, meanwhile, was only charged with one count of murder for Camille, whom he admitted to shooting while she was in the trunk. The other charges against him were dropped, including grand theft of a firearm and burglary. However, he's now facing an additional charge of battery after getting into a fight while incarcerated. Currently, all three boys have entered pleas of not guilty, but the trial is ongoing. What the court finds and how justice will be served for Layla, Michael, and Camille remains to be seen. Yeah, yeah. This is ridiculous. It's so much money out here that you can make. And y'all choosing to steal cars. I don't even think, yo, bro. The crazy thing is, you don't even get that much for selling a stolen car. Like, I've heard some numbers from watching these videos, and it'd be like $400, $1,000. You might strip it for some parts or whatever. But, like, bro, it's so much money you can make out here, bro. It's like, what the fuck is you doing that for? Then you get yourself involved with a murder you murder these people for what they for what 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 type of life-changing money did they have right there in their pocket what type of life-changing thing they had that you wanted that you murdered these people like you killed these people they ain't put you in no harm they invited you in their car they riding around with you they even trying to help you make the whatever money that you're trying to make and you just one day decide fuck it just boom and then y'all all go and snitch on each other. Like, what are y'all? Y'all trying to do this so everybody can know your gang is like that. Your gang is tough. Your gang puts in work. But then y'all all go out and snitch on each other. Y'all all go out and snitch on each other. If you're going to crash out, crash the fuck out, bro. You want to go life? Go life. Like, do it. Do it to the fullest, I guess. Like, you already did it. Now you want to switch up. Now you want to be talking about life? 
Now you want to think about yourself? Now you want to think about your family? Now you want to think about your future? Should have thought about that before you went and upped the gun on people. Oh, bro, these people are tripping, bro. Yo, let me know what y'all think about this in the comments, man. Make sure y'all smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. It's your boy Swag and I'm out, you heard?